Our New Testament lesson for today comes from Galatians chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me. To the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so I now repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you have received, let that one be accursed. Am I seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I know, for I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it. But I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Do all roads lead to God? Is Christianity the only way or is it one of many ways? You know, you can find anything on the internet today. And, uh, you know, I was searching through some web pages and there was a forum, a public forum that one of those forums that... Um, Anybody can write any comment that they would want to make and consistently in answer to the question, does it really make a difference what faith you profess? There was one response that was fairly typical of all the other responses on that page. It said this, I think that as long as you're a good person, don't hurt animals, molest children, murder, rape, you get the idea, and be kind to the earth. There is room for you in heaven, regardless of whether you go to church or not. It's between you and the one you believe to be a higher power above. God will accept everyone. Christian, Jew, Wiccan, atheist, Muslim, everyone. You know, that is an accepted uh, conventional way of thinking in our culture today. But is that true? Do all roads lead to, to heaven? Paul, in our New Testament, is upset, he's shocked, he's astonished to learn that people in Galatia who have been listening to his teachings uh, would desert the gospel for some other gospel. For Paul, it mattered very much what faith you embraced. And he is speaking as a person who had changed his faith. He had gone from being a Jew who persecuted the Christians to being a Christian who was the leader of the Christian church for many years. And Paul would have been especially astonished at our culture today. He said there's only one gospel. There is no other. In John's gospel, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But, you know, if you accept that is true, You've got some challenges before you. And I think most of us have struggled with those. First of all, what about all those who were born and lived and died without ever having heard about Jesus Christ, let alone his teachings? Are they doomed to hell because they were born at the wrong time in the wrong place in history? It doesn't really seem fair, does it? And we all have friends who are Jews or, or Muslims or Hindu and, or those who have no faith at all. And some of them are in our family. And, so, and we know people who are just theologically confused and they, they haven't really made a decision yet. What happens to them? You know, the Jews, we're told, are God's people, chosen people, 
It says so in the Bible. Surely, they're going to be saved, aren't they? What about them? Muslims worship the same God we do when you speak in historical terms. The God of Adam and Noah and Abraham. And one of the bedrock principles of Islam is there is only one God. Well, surely anyone who seeks the one God, surely they're saved. What about them? Hindu, Buddhist, all those folks who seem to work so hard to develop their spirituality. Won't God honor those who seek Him? And what about those who are just plain decent people? Who don't hurt the animals, molest children, rape, murder, and do all the other things on that list, on that webpage that I read a moment ago. But, if you say that there are indeed other Gospels and other ways to find salvation and that all roads lead to God the Father, what you are succeeding in doing is stripping Christ of the very uniqueness of Christ. Or as Paul would say in our New Testament lesson, I am shocked and astonished that you are forsaking the Gospel for other Gospels. And by the way, Paul would say, there is no other gospel. The cornerstone of the Christian faith is that Christ died for our sins. Paul said in his letter to the Romans, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And of course, we, we probably, most of us know the, what I think is one of the most familiar passages of Scripture, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have... What is it? Yeah, y'all have been here before. You've heard this. The belief that Christ is the only way to salvation has historically been the cornerstone of the Presbyterian faith. And while it is tempting... In this multicultural environment to say that one religion is the same as the other, to do that strips Christ of his uniqueness. If all roads lead to God the Father, then why send Jesus to suffer and to die for our salvation? If all roads lead to God the Father, couldn't we have skipped the nails and the cross and the grave and, you know, just get on with it? Actually, the truth is that the Bible does teach that all roads do lead to God. Jesus did not say, no one comes to God but by me. What he said was, no one comes to the Father except through me. Did you hear that difference in that? He did not say, no one comes to God except through me. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. All roads do indeed lead to God eventually. The Christian road, the Jewish road, the Muslim road, and much to their surprise, uh, even the atheist road, they will find eventually they are face to face with God. Jesus tells us in Matthew's Gospel that there will come a time when all people will end their journey face to face with God. The way Jesus put it in Matthew, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, all the angels are with Him, and He will sit on His throne in His heavenly glory, and all of the nations will gather around Him. Well, you know, that does sound like all roads lead to God. All nations gathered around Him. But Jesus continues in Matthew's Gospel. All nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep on his right, the goats on his left. Not to take it personally to those of you sitting on that side. <laughs> and as Jesus explains it, he will say to some, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you. And then Jesus will look at the others and say, Depart from me, you who are accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for you. All roads do lead to God, but at the end of most of the roads, what people will encounter is God, the judge. 
Christians come to the end of our road and we do not find God the judge. We find God the Father. For Christians, Jesus has already set things straight for us. And at the end of my journey, I would much prefer to approach God as one of his children and call him Father than to approach him as one of the accursed and speak to him as your honor, the judge. Now, how do we become children of God rather than the accused in the courtroom? John said it plainly at the beginning of his gospel. To all who received and to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Or as Jesus put it, no one comes to the Father except through me. But what about the non-Christians? And that really is, I think, the question that bothers us today. Because we in this room, we're all Christians more than likely. I suspect that we are. We've accepted Christ. We follow Christ. What we really want to know is what's going to happen to our friends, our loved ones? What about those people that we've invited to, to come into the Christian faith and they've put it off, or they've outright rejected it, uh, but we love them anyway. Or what about those who live in a time or in a place in history who never heard the gospel at all? What happens to them when they come to meet God and meet him as not a father, but a judge? What happens? Well, I'm tempted to ask you how many of you have been in a courtroom, but as your pastor, I'm not sure I want to know that. <laughs> But I know that some of us have been in courtrooms uh, for jury selection or uh, maybe we've testified uh, on someone's behalf. And, and I don't know, maybe a few of us were there on trial for murder or whatever. But anyway, most of us probably have been in a courtroom. And if you've been in a courtroom, you know that it would be unthinkable to be sitting in the courtroom watching the judge and then get up and say, Judge, let me tell you how to run things here. And to presume to be the judge. I think that's called uh, contempt of court. And it would lead to your eviction by the bailiff escorting you out. And that's the way it is with God. Mere mortals should not presume to tell God how to judge. That is not our place. James warned us in his epistle in chapter 4, there is only one judge who is able to save or destroy. But you, who are you to judge? And in Matthew's gospel, Jesus said, do not judge or you will find yourself judged. So what about those who have not accepted Christ, but do earnestly seek God on some other pathway or gospel? Or what about those who have lived in a time or place where they didn't know the message at all. What about them? Well, in Matthew's Gospel, it says it's not our place to judge. Our place is to simply trust that God is a loving, fair, just God. Our place is to stay focused on the one Gospel. Our place is to share the good news. Our place is to live a life of love, not being judgmental of others, but loving others. Our place is to give thanks that we have already gone through that judgment, not because we've stood before God the judge, but because Jesus has stood in our place. And we stand before God the Father as one who has already been forgiven. To forget that is to forget Christ's own words when he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. To forget that is to run the risk of being guilty of what so astonished and shocked Paul in today's New Testament lesson, to forsake the gospel for another, when in fact, as Paul reminds us, there is no other gospel. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might, power, dominion, and glory today and forever. Amen.